Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. One of my favorite things is pumpkins in the fall season. So I've got a gal coming up in the next half hour, Jodell Landis, who is going to be a guest from Jamie's Pumpkin Patch. Excited to have her for the very first time on the show. Also, for the very first time, I'm gonna have a guy who is a local artist, author. He and his wife have written several books and they are about the history, a lot of Lancaster. And that's Bill Venrick. So if you're familiar with him, you already know what the books are about, but I'm not gonna give that away because I want you to stick around and watch the rest of the show. And I will also include some stuff about my pumpkin pie recipe. Folks, I just wanna thank you for hanging in there and hanging out with me for the next, eh, what, 28 minutes or so. <laughs> I'll be back here in just a few. It is Down Home with Tina. Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than 110 years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. Something that I have been really excited to do, and I don't know if it's because I've wanted to fast forward to 2021, like a lot of us is wanting to do or what, but I started decorating for the fall, and I think it was August, I walked into a local store and I saw all the fall decor and I go, I'm ready for this. And I, 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 I it was kind of early, but I thought, oh, I'll just put it out on my mantle and on different areas in the house just to see if I like it. If I don't, I could always take it back. Nope, the tag stayed on it. They stayed up where I had it setting. <laughs> I thought, I just want fall to be here. So I'm really excited because I've got my pumpkin skirt on and I have Joe Del Landis, who I don't know why I didn't realize that you guys had this. I, I think I knew that you had a pumpkin farm and you guys had that, but I don't know if I ever realized that you had na changed the name to Jamie's Pumpkin Patch in recent years, I say, but it's already been seven years. I thought, where have I been for the last seven yes, years? Yes, it goes quickly, like, <laughs> for sure, it does. It does, so please tell us, if you will, Joe Dell, about Jamie's Pumpkin Patch. So Jamie's Pumpkin Patch used to be um, Lana's Pumpkin Patch, and then uh, Jamie, my sister, oldest sister, um, she passed away in 2012, and the following year of 2013 we renamed it Jamie's Pumpkin Patch it's something she loved she loved the fall and it was just very fitting for her and so we kind of just go with it and we hope to um, have a legacy and make her proud of oh, this patch absolutely absolutely do you feel her with you when uh, you're out yes, here doing yes yes <laughs> definitely because um, this past weekend we started picking a little bit and um, I was one that was always lo overloading um, our little snapper we have and she never liked that because she <laughs> said it would break the stems and stuff and so it's just those little moments that come through yeah, yeah. when we start doing the pumpkin patch yeah you go oh I gotta remember Jamie's well, actually Jamie's telling me yes <laughs> don't yeah. overload it you're gonna mess up yes mess it all up mm -hmm. it was something that I brought up to my nephews to kind of you know tell them about but oh yeah neat. So, so it's just a story yeah to pass on yes. that they can continue to pass on yes. you know Jamie me would say yes <laughs> this is yeah. something that you don't do and this is why <laughs> that is exactly what I told them because <laughs> kids they don't you know it's one of those things that they need to know why sometimes yes and this the is why behind great. it all yes yeah. that's exactly mm -hmm. right so how many years have you guys had the pumpkin patch and why um, so when we were little um, it was kind of a income for us to do, to pour, put towards our college and um, once we kind of grew up a little bit and went off to college, we kind of stopped a little bit and then um, Jamie started it back up. And I would say um, we've been doing it for probably 20 years now. 
So nice. Yeah. And everybody's through college and done yes, with they've done with college. We're off on. and yes. Are you now are they doing it for the grandkids now? <laughs> Is that what you're telling your nephews yes. or no? <laughs> yes. I'm trying I'm trying to um, coast them into thinking what they need to be doing. <laughs> coaching them, I guess you can say, um, yeah. of what they need to do for the patch. Because I told them, I, sooner or later, I'm going to be old and gray and won't be here, and they need to do it. So <laughs> oh, that's right to continue yeah. the legacy. So you have got some different pumpkins here. Would you share this? This one I never got started. So I don't know why I thought that this would be called an ugly pumpkin because it's kind of ugly. But it is it's ugly. Unique. Yes, it's very unique. <laughs> it's a goosebump pumpkin or a warty goblin pumpkin. Um, it's something that has came out in the past couple years and um, it was something that I kind of um, started just to see if somebody would like it, if they do or not, but they have really grown on me and um, I, they are kind of my favorite now. <laughs> <laughs> they are, because really these are not ones that, because like, some folks would buy, well a lot I should say, for the uh -huh. jack-o'-lanterns oh, yes. and for pumpkin mm -hmm. carving and things like that. Yeah. But for these, it's more of for the decor. Yes. Uh -huh. You don't want to mess with it. And a lot of it. people are starting to go towards that, is that they're buying pumpkins more for the decor, uh -huh. you know, for their front porch and stuff where they can stack them. But then you also have the ones that want to carve them. And, yes. Um, so you kind of have to get a mix of everybody yeah. for pumpkin for everyone. So. When do you guys do the planting of pumpkins? So we usually try and start the 1st of June, um, oh. around there, the first week of June. Um, sometimes Mother Nature does not always help us with that. Mm -hmm. um, and once we do plant, sometimes uh, Mother Nature wants to rain a lot. Um, too much so, rain is bad yes, for pumpkins. Too much rain, for, yeah, they okay. like them hot. They like it, you know, um, a hot day, hot summer. Um, but it all depends on Mother Nature. So what she's got our in store is in for her us. hands, <laughs> <laughs> right. right? So about how many pumpkins do you pick, or do folks get the opportunity to come out and pick? Well, so um, at our um, front there, we have um, already picked pumpkins, and with those pumpkins, they are labeled um, price-wise, separated, okay. and you will have the opportunity to go out and pick the pumpkins if you wish. Okay. So it just all depends what you want to do. And if it's raining or not that day, too. Yeah. <laughs> How muddy you want to get. <laughs> now, do you have certain hours, or, or do they vary? So this year, we started, um, we're going to have a set hours. Before, okay. we used to have come as you are, come, you know, whenever, whenever. type thing. Um, the good faith of putting your money in the jar. Um, we've always had that. Um, but this year, we have Monday through Friday is 1 to 6, and then Saturday, Sunday is nine to six. Okay, I feel so. to ask you this. Do you have carts or, or Yeah, so wagons? we have little wagons for people that want to go um, outside um, or out in the field, I guess you can say, um, mm -hmm. and pick abundance or pick a little bit, whatever they want. How, how many do you recommend to a wagon that Jamie <laughs> would say so that it doesn't break the stem? Right, so don't break a stem. <laughs> Uh, you probably don't want to ask me because I would say <laughs> as say many as you can fit in there. Um, they, Janie, she would not. <laughs> she would probably say you can make multiple trips yes, out yes, to the pumpkin patch would. and yeah. bring it back. Yes, and just so you don't bring that to them. That's right. Do you have more than just pumpkins that you sell at the Jamie's Pumpkin we Patch? We do. Um, we have corn stalks. We have straw. Nice. Um, we will have mums um coming and uh we will have some indian corn so a little bit of decor too if people want that um do you have any of the straw for sale the bales of that yes okay. bales of straw yes perfect i uh -huh. just thought of some of those people who like to put those yes. out in their yard and uh -huh. such yeah yes we have stalks. those available um so i kind of try to um incorporate people that like to decorate but then also people that like to um carve pumpkins um, nice. It's amazing of how many people love Halloween, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but we're glad to bring it towards to their houses and um, for them to enjoy. There's so many people that come back each year that mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, a great feeling. And also, I know that beforehand when we were talking, I want folks to know that maybe something that might not be there that week then it could be there the following week because you're like as far as different moms and stuff, you yes. continue to buy through. Yes. We're continuing to, um, you know, bring stuff out into the pumpkin patch. Um, it may not be there one week, but it will be the next. Um, it varies. 
okay. just um, depending on my time that I have and right. so <laughs> <laughs> right but you can bring out yes yeah, fall's always a busy busy time of year <laughs> it's so such, it's a beautiful time of year so one more thing because you've got a Facebook page as uh -huh. well right yes. for uh -huh. folks to follow yes Jamie's pumpkin patch um, it's on Facebook um, and then also I always share things um, yeah so but yeah stuff. So, but yes, Jamie's Pumpkin Patch, I try to keep that updated um, as much as possible. Um, okay. I like to share um, people that are helping out, um, things we yeah. have and everything. And your location, because I know where you are. Uh, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we are on 256. Um, it is a mile west of Baltimore. Um, and if you're coming from Pickerington, um, it's on 256. And if you go um, past the VFW in Baltimore, then you have gone too far, which I think if you yeah. see all the pumpkins, you might. Yeah, you'll know. But signs yeah. will definitely be posted. Does um, the VFW still have that plane? That yes, they do. Yes, it's not blue so, anymore, yes. but. It's not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not the blue plane, plane yeah. anymore, you say. Your favorite town home moment, we've got about a minute. Um, I think it is, um, even though we always argue and everything, but it's always planting. Um, the time that we plant, we sit on a planter, and um, it's always kind of a, a stressful moment, but it's kind of an aha, like, good moment. That's, I can understand, because at the end of the day, when you get to see everything, or the end of the day, yes. the end of the season, when you see all of the growth of what you put in the ground and what you've Voila, come yes. with it. <laughs> the ugly years. ones. And even the ugly ones. Yeah. We even love them. And sometimes they get a little more love <laughs> because they're so cool and unique and different. I yes. love it. All righty, Joe Down, thank you so much for thank taking the time so to much. be with me. This is yes. awesome. And folks, get your fall decor going and you can begin with it at Jamie's Pumpkin Patch. Thanks so much. I'll be back in just a minute. It's Down Home with Tina. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. I have a fella who I, I've known about him for a few years now. I think it was the Fairfield County Fair several years ago when he was selling one of the books that he had written. And I know that he had written more books prior to that. And so we're gonna talk with him. He's author, Bill Venrick. Some of you may know him because the book that I'm referring to that was at the Fairfield County Fair was Echoes from the Hill. It's the BIS history. And it was by Bill and actually his wife, Jean, who she is no longer with us. I know that he shared with me earlier, she's been gone for a year in April it's been. But boy, they in their 68 years of marriage have done quite a bit of writing. And we're gonna start with the first book that Bill shared with me called A Place to Call Home. Bill, what can you tell me about that book? <clears throat> uh, we, we adopted two children. And uh, one of the first questions on my mind was, how many superintendents did they have with her? <laughs> and that started the book. We just, and just went from there. And it has a, it's a book that we spent um, about five years writing. And my wife uh, was the, she took, took care of all the notes. And uh, I did the actual planning and publishing of the book. And uh, we've got about, I think, uh, 192 pages. Mm -hmm. And we've got, uh, Oh, uh, somewhere around 50, uh, 35, 40 pictures in it. And it has a, we interviewed 24 people. Mm -hmm. uh, they were former residents of the home. Okay. And so we made a store from there and we, uh, at the last, last part of the book, we uh, made into a, a synopsis of what orphanages were through the years. Mm -hmm. And we also had a few pages about endangered servants and indentured oh, wow. first servants were in existence before the children's home was. Wow. And uh, so that's what that's about. So we, we did, we wrote this book, published it in 2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we uh, the only, the only uh, advertisement we had was word of mouth. We, I wow. had a, I had a, 
website, a blog, and uh, we advertise to people we knew, and we've sold several hundred books. We don't know how many, but we, we sold in 14 different states. My. 14 different states bought the book. And, and that was uh, enough to say, you yeah, know. Is it still available to purchase? Yeah, yes, and for a while, I, we did, I did not know, I was not aware, I might find a, a different printer, and uh, we were on a CD for a while. We had a CD, a book, and then it dawned on us, well, digital CD, Mm -hmm. So we found somebody who did a digital printing of a book and saved a good bit of money. Absolutely. So, nice. Uh, yeah. And this this book, A Place to Call Home and Afterglow, came after that book, right, Bill? All right. Now, what this was, well, after we finished the first book, mm -hmm. um, my wife said, we ought to do an afterglow. And uh, that was in 2003, after we finished the book. And uh, my wife was a... She was a historian, and she had she had made, published a journal, written a journal for 52 years, oh. and I have 8,000 pages of her journal, and I was just uh, about four or five months ago. I was looking through the journal, and she said, "We ought to put this in the journal." And I had forgotten about the journal. I'm mean, not the journal, but I forgot about the afterglow, and so uh, I got busy. In two months, I had this done, and this is these. This is the book, and if if people wrote to us on the uh, on what was the uh, yellow pages, yeah, we did all the colors. So anybody reads this thing, oh, this was a note they sent, yeah, uh -huh. and we have pictures in here. There are 50 oh. pages here, and we uh, I'll just tell the truth, uh, we're not Rockefellers or anybody, anybody like that, but my wife said let's give these away. Oh. That's in 2003. <laughs> well, she died in 2019, and so. Well, we, we had money in the bank, but not, not that kind of money to freely spend because we reprint books. So I looked in the mailbox one day and I had a uh, stimulus check from the government, and that paid for printing the book. Oh, that's and so, awesome. But so my is wife this said, one that's a, Is it available? Yes. It's available book, as well. Uh, well, if, if you bought the first book, mm -hmm. you get the second book free. And if you were a member, if you were a resident of the children's home, you got the book free. So, uh, but they were free. That's and, uh, cool. If we printed 50 the first time and 100 books the second time, and that kind of wiped out the, the, the stimulus the, thing. The funds. But that's okay. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we, want, we can make the book reasonable enough for people to want to buy it if, if they don't have one. But yeah. we'll see how these few months go. Yeah, there you go. That's all you can do, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next book. Which one was the next book? Okay. This one? This one. Uh, my wife, I like say, well, she was a, a real genuine historian. And this was a bio autobiography of her life from three years of age till we got married. Oh, my goodness. And uh, so she, uh, she called it a pioneer girl. And uh, it's, a, a, it's a nice story. This picture was taken of her outside their little, in fact, their, their little house. It was going to be a garage when her dad built it. And they lived there until they built the big house. Uh -huh. And so she had, there's pictures all through the book. And uh, we have one picture here. Kind of, this picture of, 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 her, oh. of her mother and dad. Wow, I love old yeah. pictures. So this is, this is a, a genuine history of those years she had. And uh, it was good. And, we, and so she did all the writing herself. I picked up the I sang all the photographs. And uh, I helped put it together and publish it. And uh, there are 36 pages in that book. That one's Pioneer and We Girl. sell that book for $5. For $5. And then there's this one, Index of People and Places for Echoes from the Hill. That goes with the blue book. That goes with this one. Yeah. What it is, we, we did not have an index for, for that book. And the lady who uh, did the in index, she said, you need an index. And so we printed it separately. And she did not charge us anything for doing the index. Oh, wow. And we did it. And so we published it separately. Now, when we did the second book, the red book, and we, oh, she did yes. the same thing. She did the index for that, but we included it in the in book. The, in the book this time. So but, let's talk about these, this book here and then okay. the others, the Echoes from okay. the Hill, the Boys the, Industrial School. This, yeah. uh, the two books here. This one? We, we published this book 
it's the, the genuine history of the Boys of Dustle School, and uh, the 350 pages, and uh, about 500 photographs. Wow. And uh, we published this in 2014. Mm -hmm. We worked on this about seven years. And then we uh, got this book done. And uh, what's, this was really uh, just about the routine stuff about, we had, we made a lot of interviews, but it's an information book about what the BIS was like. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the early 40s, 1940s, the BIS was the second largest employer. And uh, uh, what's the first today? Well, education, schools, mm -hmm. second, uh, school, uh, then the uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. But then the BIS was the second largest in the county. And so that's a, a fantastic uh, idea. And so we got all about the BIS, what they did, why they did it, and who did it. Yeah. And so it's, it's a good reference. What's the difference between that one and this one? A period of time. Oh, okay, okay. In other words, uh, the, uh, this was done, uh, well, we, uh, a better term is to say the sequel to it. This okay. is the rest of the story, you want to say, the rest yes. of the story. Yeah. So, and uh, what happened was, I did not mention this, um, Mike Tharp and yes. uh, some <laughs> other people we know read our first book and said, Bill, you need to, you and Gene need to do one about being an ass. So that's what was getting us this. And when we got this done, uh, there was a lot more that could be said. And they said, well, my hand in here, I made a mistake of putting book one. Oh. <laughs> and said, when's book two coming? <laughs> you must <laughs> so, have, yeah, no. So I had to get busy and do book two. And that's yeah. about the same amount of pages, 350 pages, about 500 photographs. And uh, it's uh, well documented. It's the only history, these two are the only history of the children's home and the BIS. Nothing else is written about them. Nowhere. So um, we did not know why, but uh, we did. Wow. And then that took about, f the second book took about five years. And my wife was, well, she was uh, an invalid for about eight years. And uh, she helped a little bit on the second book, but uh, she mainly proofread stuff like that. But uh, I finished it uh, after she passed away. I finished in two months. Got the rest of it done. Where can folks buy the Pardon? books? Where can they buy the book? The book is sold uh, a lot at the frame shop. Yes, the Cindy frame and Steve shop. Smith. You know the frame shop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And also the um, Georgian, they have it. And uh, well, the Fairfield Federal, they have mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. And you, so you can buy it at those three places. Or you can buy it through me. But um, we never published our address uh, yeah. on the internet. So uh, we have a box number, P.O. Box 225, 225 for Bill Venrick, P.O. Box 225. And this book is $40 for this book, and the red book is $45. All and right. You, you might open that book up to about the second or third page. It's your, uh, just, uh, there's a, if you can, uh, right there. Isn't oh, that great? Oh, wow, and yeah. That shows Lancaster from Mount Pleasant. Nice, nice. And, uh, that picture well, was loaned to us uh, by uh, Iman, John Iman. Yep, so, uh, yep. I want to thank you. You're sure welcome. For being with me today. It has been a pleasure. I've been wanting to get him on for quite some time, folks. Bill Venrick, you can catch him on, are you on Facebook? They're on are Facebook. You, on Facebook, okay, find him. And then you heard him say where you can purchase some of the books. I know that Cindy and Steve Smith, the frame shop, is one of them. I want to thank you so much. For watching, hope you'll get yourself a book about history here of Lancaster. You're watching Down Home with Tina. I'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm Amanda Wattenberg, Regional Director at Ohio Guidestone. Do you or does someone you know have a substance abuse disorder? Have you been thinking about getting help but don't know where to start? It takes a lot of courage to ask for help, but it's the most important step you can take. If you think you know everything that's available in Fairfield County, think again. Like other chronic diseases, addiction can be managed successfully. Treatment enables people to counteract addiction's powerful, disruptive effects on the brain's behavior and regain control of their lives. Even if it takes multiple attempts, treatment does work and people do recover from addiction every day. So keep trying because your life matters. 
You matter, and we're here to help. Call 211 and ask for the treatment resources available right here in Fairfield County. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. Welcome to this week's Down Home with Tina. This is my last one. Yeah. Shoot, it's my last one, not yeah. my first one. I had in my head. Sorry, Josh. Okay. okay. It's ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Down Home with Tina. Earlier in the show, I had a gal from Jamie's Pumpkin Patch over outside of Baltimore. Her name's Jodell Landis, and we were talking about pumpkins. And I love pumpkins. One of my favorite things to make, other than cookies, chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> is pumpkin pie. As a matter of fact, I have gotten compliments, which is really nice because I always worry about what something tastes. I could make it a hundred times the exact same way, but I still worry about making sure that it is very tasty. It's actually something my dad requests every year, an entire pumpkin pie, and he will sit down and eat a quarter of it or a half of it. I can't remember which. I'd like to think in my head that it's just a quarter of, like, that's what he calls a piece of pie. That's what it is, is a quarter of the pumpkin pie. So it makes me laugh. Well, anyways, it's become one of the fun things that I like to make around the fall season. And if you didn't know this, you can buy what is a pie pumpkin. And I didn't know that you could do that. I always thought that it just came in the can. I didn't know that that's how folks could do it. Like when I say, making and baking from scratch, that's from scratch. When you go, you buy the pie pumpkin, you pick it up, it's not very big, at, buy it at the store, of course, and then you go home and what you do is you cut it in half and you clean out the insides of it and then you put a little bit of water at the bottom of a pan and like a baking, like I'd say a cake pan, and you let that bake until you can poke through the pumpkin and then when that's done it's very very hot so you're going to want it to cool a little bit you want to scrape that out now if you don't want to go through all of that trouble that equals the same amount as what a pie in the can would come and Libby's is my favorite it is the one without any kind of spices it is 100% pumpkin okay so you can use one or the other so my little pumpkin that I have with me here it has a pumpkin pie recipe on it but this calls for pumpkin pie spice I don't use the pumpkin pie spice. I like to go with the, um, I think it's the different kinds of, oh, what are some of those ingredients? It's been, well, about a year since I've made it. I tell you what I'm gonna do, folks. I will go ahead and put up my pumpkin pie recipe on my Facebook page, Down Home with Tina, so that way you can see how I make my pie. I will also include the way I make my crust. Now, the crust that I make is with Crisco. It's the butter Crisco that comes in the sticks and that actually will tell you how to make a pie crust but the difference is i use buttermilk that came from a an amish friend of mine that i met in western new york instead of water for your pie crust you can use buttermilk which gives it more flavor so with that being said because <laughs> i'm almost out of time for the show this week i hope that you try something new if you've never made a pumpkin pie and that your pumpkin pie turns out pretty good for the holiday season I want to thank my sponsors. They are the reason why I get to be here. I want to thank you. You are also the reason why I get to be here because you continue to watch the show and follow me. You can watch me on Facebook, CLN 1021, and also YouTube, CLN Your Hometown Connection. Folks, I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed week. Hugs, blessings, God bless, good day. You've been watching Down Him with Tina.